Hi everyone, Dr. Bernard here. Essential oils can be very powerful, just like this mother-son combo, we'll find out. As always, references to subject matter with links to similar cases published in literature are in the description below. This is not an uncommon poisoning, as I will demonstrate in this video, which is published in 8K. I make a new video every month, so if you subscribe and turn on all notifications, we'll get some gas station nachos together. A boy accidentally drank his mom's essential oils. This is what happened to his brain. BB is a three-year-old boy presenting to the emergency room with nausea, vomiting, and tachypnea. Tachy meaning fast and nia referring to breath. He was breathing quick and struggling. His mother Megan tells the admitting nurse that she found her son on the floor face down in a pool of his own stomach contents. She turned him over to see his face and she couldn't believe what she saw. 18 months ago, Megan started having trouble with her arms and her legs. Her hands would be swollen all up and down her fingers to the point where bending them would hurt. Megan thought that maybe she had developed arthritis. You know, body's different after having kids now, but this shouldn't be a problem. Years ago, when she had just finished college, Megan had gotten into essential oils, just as a fun thing to do with some of her friends. She wanted to live a more natural lifestyle, and she loved the smell of things like lavender and tangerine. In her mind, she connected the dots, the arthritis and the oils. She remembered that there's some oils that can be used topically for pain to calm and cool down what she assumed was inflammation happening in her body, attacking her joints and causing pain. She had some of this wintergreen oil left over from years past. It's the same stuff that they have in other pain relief creams that they sell over the counter. Why not mix it with some carrier oils and rub it on all the parts that hurt, she thought. And everything seemed to go great. Megan and her son were able to be happy and healthy because mom was pain free. But a few months later, Megan's arthritis came back and it would wax and wane. The oils had child safety caps on the top, where one has to push down with more concentrated force than a child could know to exert. But because Megan's hands would hurt so bad, she elected to change the caps to ones without the safety. You could simply screw these ones on and off without the need to push down first. Megan knew the risk of doing this was that her son could potentially get into the oils now, but it's all right, she thought. Just make sure to put them out of reach so that he can't get to them and there will be no problem, she thought but there was a problem. One day, Megan was making her winter green ointment sitting down at a coffee table. She got a phone call from her boss. She stepped aside as she left all her oils out on the table. Some ointment was already made, and so she wasn't totally aware of how much oil was left in each bottle when she walked away. BB, not knowing any better, got a hold of the oils as he started drinking. When she got back, the bottles of her oil seemed toppled over. It was kind of messy. She didn't remember if she had knocked over some in the rush to pick up the call from her boss, so she didn't think too much of it. Over the next several hours, the oils settle and absorb into BB's body, and his mother has no idea what had happened. He starts to act lethargic, but his breathing becomes labored and fast. He doesn't act like how he normally does for that time of day as he empties his stomach onto the carpet. Megan finds him face down on the floor in a panic as she calls for 911, and he's brought to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, doctors noticed that BB had a fever and his breathing was fast and labored. When they listened to his lungs, they were clear. He didn't have a blocked airway, so his tachypnea probably isn't from some kind of congestion or fluid buildup in his lungs, at least not yet. Because he's three years old, he can't verbalize to anyone how he's feeling. No one knew that he drank anything, and he can't tell anyone that he did. And Megan hasn't connected in her mind yet that BB being this way is related to her essential oils being messy on that table. A blood test finds that BB has low bicarbonate presence in blood. But what does that mean? Bicarb is one part of baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate. If you remember from middle or high school, there was a small science experiment where you mix vinegar with baking soda to get a chemical reaction because vinegar is an acid and baking soda is a base. So if BB has low bicarbonate, then it means that he has low base presence in blood. The body is a balanced system, so if base is low, then acid is the opposite of base, then it means that he has too much acid. This is called acidosis. Acid, formally defined as the concentration of hydrogen ion, and osis referring to a disorder. An acid disorder bringing us to the essential oils of his mother that he accidentally drank. Some essential oils probably won't cause problems if you drink them. 
but some of them are extreme extracts of things that are fine to put on the skin, but the moment that they get ingested and absorbed into the body, they become poison. Megan used wintergreen oil as an arthritis remedy, and that's great. It does an awesome job at that because the active ingredient contained therein is methyl salicylate. The salicylate moiety you might recognize from the chemical name of aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid. In the body, they become the same salicylate, and this is one of the most common over-the-counter therapies. Even Pepto-Bismol is known as bismuth subsalicylate. You can even find salicylic acid in face wash. This makes sense with Megan's use. Aspirin is an anti-inflammatory medicine. It's how it relieves pain. You could apply it onto the skin where some of it gets absorbed, or you can take tablets of it by mouth. The problem is wintergreen oil is really concentrated. The bottle that BB drank has the equivalent of at least 66 big aspirin tablets. Just a third of this bottle alone can be fatal if taken by mouth in a child, and BB drank three times that fatal dose because he drank the entire bottle. Even though BB can't tell doctors what had happened, their findings from examining him give them some more clues. The interesting thing about the body is that it regulates acid-base balance quickly through breathing. We inhale oxygen, but we exhale carbon dioxide. And this brings us back to bicarbonate. The blood delivers oxygen all throughout the body, so what we breathe in goes from our lungs right into our blood. But blood is made of water. And if we're trying to put oxygen into it by inhaling, then it means at the same time, carbon dioxide is in the blood, ready to get exchanged out through exhaling. The reason why this is important is because when carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, it exists as a balanced system with bicarbonate, an acid. This tells the medical team a lot about what's happening in BB. He has low bicarbonate in his blood, meaning that there's more acid than base. Going backwards in the understanding of blood, He's breathing fast, meaning that his body is desperately trying to push excess carbon dioxide out as a way to fix the acidosis, but things keep getting worse. BB falls unconscious in the hospital as he's admitted in. As doctors take another blood test, they find that he now has acidemia. It's not just low base presence in blood now, but there's an acid presence in blood, meaning that it's starting to spill all throughout his body. But where is this acid coming from? This brings us back to BB's fever. When energy is consumed, heat is created. When the body consumes a lot more energy than it can create, then a lot of heat gets generated, leading to potential hyperthermia, high body temperature. But why is this happening? Inside the cells, there's a powerhouse called the mitochondria. It generates energy in the form of ATP by using electricity, the movement of positive and negative charges just like you see on a battery. When salicylate is inside the mitochondria, it flows freely going back and forth wherever it wants and starts to disturb the electrical flow. As this short circuit is formed, ATP isn't made anymore, but cells need that energy. They can detect something is wrong, but they don't know why. The powerhouse keeps working harder and harder, kind of like a hamster running in a wheel, and because the wheel doesn't touch the ground, the hamster can run forever and not get anywhere. Salicylate toxicity forces the mitochondria to run in place, never actually producing any energy. As the wheels keep spinning faster and harder, massive amounts of heat are released, and because energy is only consumed and not made in BB's body anymore, this is one part of where his carbon dioxide and acidosis are coming from. The tachypnea, the metabolic acidosis, the nausea and vomiting before falling unconscious. Doctors ask Megan if her son had accidentally eaten or drank some kind of chemical, specifically something related to aspirin. Already in a panic, she said she didn't know, she didn't think that he did, but then it dawned on her. She left her essential oils out when she stepped aside to talk to her boss on the phone. The bottles didn't have child safety caps. She came back to them and saw a mess that she didn't remember leaving. As she tells doctors every single oil that BB could have drank, their blood test returns and it confirms everything. He has high salicylate presence in blood from drinking a bottle of wintergreen oil made of methyl salicylate. Finding the problem is great for the doctors, but things are only getting worse now. BB's acidemia is intensifying. More acid has spilled into his blood compared to just a couple of hours before, and because he's unconscious now, it means that his brain is affected. But how did the brain get involved? We've already established that cells need a lot of energy to function, but in toxic settings, huge amounts of salicylate forces cells to use more energy than they can create. One function of cells is to maintain their fluid balance. 
A cell doesn't want to be super bloated. It also doesn't want to be shriveled up. To maintain the balance of fluid, cells can't just pull water from the outside and shove it in. But what they can do is manipulate sodium, because wherever sodium is, water will flow towards it. In this small science experiment, I dissolve salt in this water and place it into a semi-permeable tube, meaning that only water and nothing else can flow in and out of it. I place this tube in a pool of distilled water that has no salt dissolved in it, and you'll see that water enters the tube. That water flows towards where there's sodium. If cells can pump sodium in and out, then they can control their fluid balance. This pumping of electrolytes requires energy, which if the cells aren't making anymore and they're starting to run out of it, then it means that they can't control their own fluid balance. Sodium doesn't get pumped out of the cell anymore. Water flows in and the cells become bloated. When all the cells become bloated, the organ becomes bloated. The brain starts to swell up and expand into the skull, but this is only the start of the problem. The thing about salicylate as a chemical is that it exists as a second form in a balance with itself as salicylic acid. Salicylate has an electrical property associated with it, a negative charge. The reason this is important is because when a chemical has a charge, it cannot enter or exit a cell by itself. But salicylic acid isn't charged. Salicylic acid enters and exits cells however and whenever it wants to. And because BB has acidemia, a high hydrogen ion presence in blood, it means that there's so much hydrogen floating around, salicylate only exists as salicylic acid as it now starts to flood into every single organ. The brain's not only swelling now because it doesn't have enough energy to maintain fluid balance, but it starts discharging. The heart starts beating in strange rhythms because muscle needs a lot of energy, but as salicylic acid disturbs all ATP production, the cells can't keep up. Fluid starts flowing into the lungs because those cells don't have enough energy to maintain their fluid balance. BB's body tried the best that it could to breathe out extra carbon dioxide and push the acid in his blood to protect his organs from this, but the flood of wintergreen oil that he drank simply overwhelmed this mechanism. Is there anything that the medical team can do at this point to reverse this? By the time they asked Megan if BB had accidentally eaten something or drank some kind of chemical, they started to take measures for what they thought could be happening. If he has acidemia and acidosis, specifically low bicarbonate presence in blood, then the answer is to give him bicarbonate. This will push the balance of acid down. As more base is infused into his blood, it prevents salicylate from becoming salicylic acid, forcing it to keep its electrical charge so it can't enter into his organs. Additional measures were taken by doctors to force base into BB's urine. This allows the body to use the kidneys to filter and concentrate salicylate so that it can be eliminated in the urine. There isn't much that can be done once most salicylate becomes salicylic acid in the body during a toxic event because there isn't an easy way to suck it out of the organs. In some cases, patients will appear to be okay, and within a couple of hours, the aspirin toxicity will overtake them permanently. The clinical decline can happen quickly and suddenly in this setting. The only thing that we can do now is to make the blood basic as quickly as possible to prevent all of that from happening. And luckily, the medical team were able to catch it just in time in BB's case. After several days in the hospital and a lesson learned by Megan to take great caution in never exposing any risk ever with any potential household danger to her son, BB was able to make a full recovery. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.